If you know even one singular thing about the Fate franchise, it's probably that there's a lot of it. If you go out searching for what's in it, you're gonna find a long list of anime, visual novels, RPGs, a mobile game, you know, you're gonna find a lot. And if you decide that you finally want to see what all the hype is about, if you decide that you finally want to get into Fate, it's pretty easy to feel intimidated by the sheer amount of content it has. So then, you're probably wondering where the best place to start is and what makes it the best place, and that's what this whole video is about. This is my guide to getting started in Fate. So before we talk about the best place to start, first I want to make sure you know what Fate is. And it's a series of games, anime, light novels, and manga about what would happen if mages summoned some of the greatest heroes and villains from history and mythology, and then they all fight each other to the death over having a wish granted by the Holy Grail. What goes on between the lines and who's involved is gonna vary by whichever the numerous iterations of Fate you decide to consume. As a matter of fact, speaking of consumption, you know, in its entirety, Fate's honestly not all that unlike a sundae. And the foundation upon which any proper sundae is made is ice cream, and we got three scoops here. The biggest and most important scoop is Fate Stay Night, of course, and the others are its prequel, Fate Zero, and its sequel, Fate Hollow Ataraxia. Now, ice cream is already fantastic on its own, and for some of you, this may already be plenty and you're good to go, but others among you might be wanting a little bit more. So if you want to add a little bit of pizzazz to your ice cream, I think the next step here should be the sprinkles. And, you know, here's the thing about sprinkles. You're not gonna get much of anything out of them if you just eat them by themselves. You know, sprinkles were designed to embellish and enhance the ice cream, so you're gonna get a lot more out of these if you eat them the way they were meant to be eaten. And the sprinkles on the Fate Stay Night Sunday are directly related spin-offs like Today's Menu for the Emia Family and The Case Files of Lord El Melwa II. Now, we got a pretty nice looking bowl of ice cream here, right? I mean, it's looking good enough to eat, and you can eat it now if you want, and honestly, at this point, I generally recommend doing so. But yet, if you still want more, then by God, I think it's time to give you more. Let's add a little bit of fluff to this sundae, you know? Let's add some whipped cream. Let's add... God, you know what? Let's just add everything <laughs> This fluff is pretty much the sole reason Fate looks as big and intimidating as it does, because there's just so much of this in proportion to those foundational titles, you know? This fluff represents the AUs that might have returning characters, but they don't require any prerequisite Fate knowledge, you know, things like Prisma Ilia, Apocrypha, and the Fate Extra titles. And then, of course, there's also the miscellaneous stuff here, like Fate Grand Order and the fighting games. For better or for worse, none of these titles are very representative of what the Stay Night titles are like, but if you want to give any of these a try, then the good news is that pretty much all of these can be enjoyed in any order you want since it's not directly related to anything else. The only exceptions are Carnival Phantasm, where you should also be familiar with Nasu's other works because this is just a giant crossover between all of them, and then the Fate Extra titles, which do actually have a suggested order. God, I really hope that metaphor was effective because that was literally a brand new can of whipped cream. So then, you got your spoon in hand and you're feeling ready to finally take on the Fate Sunday. So, where do you start? Definitely, and without a doubt, the Stay Night titles, and I say that for two reasons. One, First and foremost, the Stay Night titles are the foundation of Fate. As a matter of fact, the visual novel by Kinoko Nasu, Fate Stay Night, is literally the first Fate title that was made. These titles are the ones that represent what Fate is at its core. Plus, although understanding the Stay Night titles isn't necessary for understanding all the other Fate titles, these are the ones that are at least referenced more than any others. And then two, if we're gonna be... Totally honest here, the Stay Night titles are almost always called the best ones, and that's not to say that everything else is bad, just that this is where most people, including myself, would say that this is where fate is at its absolute best. So, all that being said, which of the Stay Night titles is the best place to start? 
point blank, the absolute best starting point for Fate is the Fate Stay Night visual novel. It's the source material that everything else is based off of, it's fantastic, and it's one of my all-time favorites. It's the kind of visual novel that's so excellent that I'd still recommend it to people who aren't usually fans of the genre because it's just that great. Now, because Type Moon kinda sucks, it's not officially available in English, and given how long it's been since its release, I highly doubt it ever will be, but there's an English translation of it by Mirror Moon that's pretty easy to find, so... you know... At this point, the next thing you're gonna need to know is what order you should play the routes in. There are three story routes in Fate Stay Night. There's Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works, and Heaven's Feel. And coincidentally, that's also the order you should play them in for maximum... <laughs> So that's the best place for you to start, and if you want suggestions on where to go after that, it's definitely gonna be Hollow Ataraxia and Fate Zero. It doesn't particularly matter which of those two you try first, just as long as you get to them after you get through all three routes of Fate Stay Night. As for what they are and how they fit into all of this, Hollow Ataraxia is another visual novel by Nasu, and it's a sequel that takes place six months after Fate Stay Night. And then there's Fate Zero, which is definitely much more more widely known about than Hollow Ataraxia. It's a prequel to Fate Stay Night, and what makes this one kinda unique among the Stay Night titles is that it wasn't written by Natsu, it was originally a light novel series by Gen Urobuchi, the same guy who's responsible for Madoka and Song of Saya, among many other titles. But getting back to Fate Zero, it's pretty well known thanks to its fantastic fantastic anime adaptation by Ufotable, but English translations of the light novel exist if you'd rather read it than watch it. <sighs> And speaking of anime, <laughs> a fair number of you might either not want to read the visual novel, or perhaps it's just completely inaccessible to you, I don't know. But the bottom line here is, you're only gonna be watching the anime. Now, it's still pretty easy for you to get into Fate, and there's still plenty of great Fate content available to you, but there is a caveat. The visual novel isn't just better than the anime, if I'm gonna be totally honest, but it's bigger too. The main Fate anime you're gonna be recommended are Fate Zero and the adaptations of the Fate Stay Night visual novel routes by Ufotable. And don't get me wrong, they're all fantastic adaptations and definitely worth a watch, even if you do decide to read the visual novel, but alas, these anime can't adapt everything. And the most noticeable absences outside of a few scenes and monologues are Hollow Ataraxia and the Stay Night route. Hollow Ataraxia just point blank does not have an anime adaptation of any kind, or at least that's the case as of when I am making this video. And then as for the Stay Night route, uh, well, it does technically have an anime adaptation, in fact it actually has two, but they're pretty different, and I mean that in more ways than one. As you may or may not know, Ufotable wasn't the first group to try to adapt Fate into an anime. In 2006, Studio Dean tried to adapt the Stay Night route in an anime called Fate Stay Night, but it has been nicknamed Dean Stay Night by much of the fanbase. Even though it's supposed to be an adaptation of the Stay Night route, it still throws in these random and out of place spoilery pieces of unlimited blade works and heavens feel in it. It's definitely a watch it at your own risk situation, but if you want my opinion, then honestly, I would just say to skip it. It's not worth spoiling blade works and heavens feel over, not even close. As for the second one, it's a two episode OVA called TV Reproduction. This one came out in 2010 in anticipation of the Blade Works movie, and it's just a heavily edited version of Dean Stay Night that tries to focus more on the events that were actually in Stay Night. And I know that may sound better on the surface, but the reality is that it tries to compress a 30 ish hour visual novel route into two hours, so it's extremely rushed, it misses a ton of details, and surprise! it's bad. Alright, so now that you know all of that, how would one go about getting into the Fate anime despite that? Well, your best starting point is gonna be Fate Zero. Now, you may be wondering why I'm telling you to start with the prequel if you're only gonna be watching the anime, and it's mostly because this was the first Ufotable anime to air, and there's some nice references to it in their Blade Works anime. Some Fate fans will argue that you should still wait until after you've seen Blade Works and Heaven's Feel to watch this one, since it does have a couple of spoilers for Heaven's Feel, but I mean, 
Honestly, I don't think these spoilers are so massive that they're gonna ruin the experience. More importantly, as of when I am making this video, at the very least, not all of the Heavensfield movies are even finished yet, but I'll talk more about that in just a moment. But the bottom line here is that prequel or not, Fate Zero still does a great job of introducing characters and explaining the premise of what's going on. There's no absolutely perfect starting point for the anime, but I'd say Fate Zero is as close as you're gonna get. And then once you finish Zero, next up should be Unlimited Blade Works. Now, Blade Works has two adaptations. It has a movie from 2010 and a TV series from 2014. Now, the movie is less of a coherent movie and more like an animated highlight reel that assumes you can fill in the blanks because you've read the visual novel. So yeah, the TV series is definitely gonna be the way to go since it's just a better and more thorough adaptation. And plus, it's just a fantastic anime in general. So you know. And finally, once you finish Blade Works, you can go on to the Heaven's Feel movies. These are brilliant, and the second one is literally one of the greatest animated movies I've ever seen, but I'm not here to review. I'm here to guide, so let's get back on topic. The Heaven's Feel movies are gonna be a trilogy, but as of when I am making this video, only the first two are out, and the third one is scheduled to be out in 2020. As a matter of fact, fun fact, its trailer actually came out while I was working on this guide, and it looks gorgeous. And so we're back at the topic of this being another one of the reasons why I'm recommending to watch Fate Zero before Heaven's Feel, because right now at least, Heaven's Feel just isn't done as far as the anime is concerned. There's no point in waiting till it's completely out if you want to get into Fate now when Zero can be just as good of a starting point. Although, that being said, once all three movies are good and out, Blade works Heaven's Feel and then Zero is probably gonna end up being a better order to go in, or at the very least, it'll be just as good. I guess what I'm just trying to say here is that you can start with Zero, or you can start with Blade Works. Just do yourself a favor and don't start with Heaven's Feel, alright? And once you're finished with those titles, Congrats! You've officially made your way through all of the core Fate anime. All the other anime are either AUs or spin-offs of things you just watched, they're totally separate stories, or their last encore, which, again, you're best off not watching unless you've played Fate Extra. In any case, if you're looking for more recommendations even after you've watched all these, I mean, honestly, I'm not a super big fan of any of the other non-Stay Night anime, but what's on the menu for the Emiya family is honestly super adorable. There's also the case files of Lord El Milwa II, or Lord El Miloy II, however you want to pronounce it. Anyways, it's still airing as of when I'm making this guide, and if you're like me and you're a big fan of Waver, then you might get some enjoyment out of it too. And on that note, I think that's everything, so let's go ahead and do a quick recap here. If you're gonna get into Fate, then the Fate Stay Night visual novel really is, bar none, the best place to start. If you can't or don't want to read the visual novel, even though you should, you're missing out on a substantial amount of content, but you can still get into Fate solely via the anime. I'd suggest starting with Fate Zero if that's what you're gonna do, and then watching Unlimited Blade Works, the TV series, and then the Heaven's Feel movies. On that note, I hope I answered all your questions about getting into Fate. If I didn't, then you can feel free to ask in the comments, and hopefully either I or someone else can respond. Hmm, you know, I'm not really sure how to finish this video off, so, uh, God, I, I don't know, Arturia best girl. For what it's worth, I got into Fate by starting with Dean Stay Night. I hated it. I avoided Fate for several years until Fate Zero came out. I watched it, loved it, got into the visual novel, and then 